Hello and welcome to another 3D survey tutorial. Today I'll present to you a powerful new feature called X-ray views. You may already know the X-ray orthophoto feature, which we introduced a few years ago. With 3D Survey 3.0, we present a scan module, which, among other things, brings the X-ray views. This means you get X-ray custom orthophoto along any axis, top down, left right, and front to back. Now let's see what it can do on this dataset. This point cloud was produced by combining and reducing five different SLAM point clouds. It has 99 millions of points and you can see we got this complex building in its entirety. However, vectorizing rooms and facades would be a very difficult task, especially if you need to lock your plans on a specific plane, like floor or wall. That's why we decided to develop this feature. Now let's go through this process step by step. Find the X-ray views in the toolbar and click Calculate new X-ray views. A familiar dialog opens up. It's exactly the same as the one that's used for the single top-down X-ray or the photo. Now let's go over the parameters here. First, select the source point cloud you want to create X-ray views from. Then there's target resolution. This simply defines the resolution of created images. Color transparency is the crucial parameter for this feature. It determines the weight of each point. The higher the value, the lesser the impact of each point is. If you lower this value, the lines in the final image will be brighter and thicker. And finally, transparent background. Check this box if you want a transparent background on your exported images. And when you're ready, just click Generate button. When generated, 3D Survey will automatically take you to the new X-Ray Views tab. Here we have three panels with their corresponding images, one for each axis. For better representation, let's go back a bit. The front view is created along the green axis, the right along the red, and the top-down view is created along the blue axis. Imagine these images as a heat map of point cloud being flattened along the given axis. Now while this image does look cool, it's a bit messy for real work. That's where we come to creating new layouts and sections. First, let's define what a layout or a section is. A layout is a horizontal top-down view of your 3D model defined as a slice on a side image. Imagine it like a layer of cake. Conversely, the section is a vertical image of your 3D model. It's defined on a top-down image and it's perfect for representing a wall or a facade. Let's say we want to vectorize each floor of this building. We'll define a layout for each of them. Find the Create New Layout or Section button. When this message pops up, you can start drawing. Click once to define the left edge, move your mouse to define the layout's extent, and then click again. Notice this red line. It is perhaps the most important element here. It defines the height on which your vectorization will later snap. That's why we'll set it to the floor level. This yellow box functions like a classic bounding box. Everything you filter out of it will not be visible in the final layout. And so we crop out everything below and above our chosen floor. It's not necessary, but you can also crop out the empty space on the left and the right of your chosen area. If you possess the exact measurements of your extent, you can also input them as numbers in the box above. When ready, just click Confirm and in a few seconds your new layout is created. If we zoom into it, we can clearly see the floor plan. Each room is clearly visible and there's little to no noise. And the best thing here is, we can start our vectorization right away. 
I'll give myself a bit more room by unchecking the front and the right view. I can also resize the panels as I wish. And now I really have enough room for vectorization. Just select the line tool and start drawing. The lines are saved in your active CAD layer. If you make a mistake, pressing backspace will delete the last vertex. Now let's finish off this room, shouldn't be too difficult. For this showcase I'm ignoring the windows and just dragging my line along the walls. When you get back to the starting point of your polygon, the last point will automatically snap to the first one. Now let's switch on the turbo mode and do another room or two. Now let's also try to create the section. Sections are used if you want to vectorize a vertical feature like a facade. We click create new layout or section again and define our area of interest on a top-down image. We carefully align the red line to the facade. We also have to exclude the inner walls since we're only interested in the facade. Once happy with your selection, click confirm and your section is created. Now I bet you were expecting a better result. Here we can't really see the edges very well. But don't worry, I'll show you how to fix this. Let's go back and generate the X-ray views again. Remember, we left the color transparency at 70 by default. That was great for the top-down floor planning. And now we'll set it to 40 and the resolution will be 1 cm per pixel. Click generate again and give it a few minutes. The reason why we had to do this here is because the point cloud is much less dense on the outside than it is on the inside. Right, so here are our newly generated X-ray views. You can already see that the lines here are much whiter and thicker than in the previous case. So, let's repeat the process again. Choose create new section or layout, draw your line, make sure it's aligned with the facade and you crop out the inner walls. Now we're ready, generate, give it a few seconds and here we are. Now you can clearly see every edge of the wall or window frame. Vectorization of these features will be super easy. Now you could watch me draw lines on these arcades for minutes, but let's just skip to the end results, shall we? So you can see I vectorized the two floors, added the windows, the arcades, the frame of the building, and so on. Back to our interface, you can see each feature has its own layer. That's useful for setting group properties and exporting separate features. Now let's see another case. This one was done as a combination of photogrammetry and LiDAR camera. The two models were aligned in 3D survey. Check out the other tutorial for more info. Ok, let's create the 2D views for this one now. I'll leave the transparency at 70 and change the resolution to 1. A quick reminder while we wait. In order to generate the X-ray views from both point clouds, you have to merge them first. Anyways, here's our result. What I wanted to show you on this one is how we align 2D views in case where our model is not perpendicular to the north-south axis. While our top-down image looks ok, the side two takes don't make much sense. We can't really do much vectorization on them. Aligning the 2D views is a simple task. Just select the first icon here in the Tools section, find a corner, click and align the axis with the walls. Click again to fix the axis and click Confirm. Now your 2D views will be recalculated. 
Once done, we can see our images are now nicely perpendicular. They are in a sort of temporary coordinate system. But don't worry, this is just a visualization. Your model is still on the right coordinates. Now let's say we want to get rid of that neighbor's roof on a side image. We'll crop it out easily by making a new section. And there we have it, a nice, much cleaner side image. Now let's create a couple of more sections and layouts. And this is it for this tutorial. I hope you liked it and found it useful. Remember, this feature is available in our scan module. Check out the link below to see what other features it brings you. And if you haven't already, subscribe to our channel for more tutorials like this one. See you next time!